What's good people? How's it going? Welcome back to the channel. If you guys are new here, please do subscribe down below. Smash the like, hit the bell. Those things help out a lot. YouTube does notify people when we upload, so just make sure you hit that bell. Anyway guys, today we got a dope episode for you because it's all about identifying and preventing mold in your harvested flowers, man. Because that shit is crazy and it can cause issues to your health and it can ruin your entire crop and it's just Bruh. not good. If you find mold on your pre-harvested flower, you can consider that batch and all of your hard work a write-off it's just gone man i'm talking bye bye see ya so to prevent this today's episode we're going to help you identify and prevent all that mold growth in the grow room <laughs> but before we get into that guys huge shout out to everyone that's supporting us on patreon man all you guys friggin rock we got some crazy stuff planned for you guys and a lot of you guys actually got your gold boxes and your packs already so i'm looking forward to seeing how some of that stuff goes man and don't worry we got more stuff heading your way as well if you are part of the ican fam definitely join up on patreon man what you doing you're missing out bro and guys we're getting even closer to the launch of diesel dog man i honestly just can't wait it's gonna be awesome it's pretty much that place where high fashion and elevated minds collide and it's gonna be awesome man Perfect. so if you guys want to grab some of that diesel dog gear definitely look out for it because i am stoked now without further ado let's get into today's episode <laughs> Yes guys, so you've nurtured your prized plants from a seedling. You've carefully harvested your bounty, packed it away and you're ready to enjoy it. But what's this fuzzy white stuff all over or maybe it's a little bit gray i can't tell well Bruh. your harvested buds have mold friend and that sucks mold can undo all of your care and hard work literally if you aren't careful in the pre and post harvest phases especially storage the two weeks leading up to harvest and the first two weeks afterwards are actually the most opportune time for the mold to set up shop on your flowers now unlike a nutrient deficiency or even a pest outbreak during the growing phases once mold is on your flowers it ruins them and the damage can be reversed it can be undone toking on or consuming moldy flowers can cause you great harm at the minimum the inhalation of mold can cause allergic reactions and at worst protracted illnesses can result from the inhalation of mold spores now to avoid this dangerous situation it's important to monitor the conditions leading up to and after harvest once you understand the conditions that favor mold and how to identify it you'll be in a better position to prevent it from occurring in the first friggin' place but you got to understand how the mold forms now mold Mold spores exist nearly everywhere in the environment. If the conditions aren't conducive for its growth and reproduction, then typically nothing happens and no one is any the wiser. But it's extremely difficult to avoid those spores. They're in the air, they get tracked into your grow rooms, into your houses, inadvertently, but they get tracked in. And some of them are even already present sometimes in your grow media or on your plants themselves. Living healthy plants have natural defenses against these mold spores from taking root. Now that, coupled with good air filtration, will prevent most growing areas from having any serious issues with mold but it's easy for the situation to turn and flip on its head and it, when it does it flips super quick if the humidity levels get too high mold will often follow especially when there's another catalyst such as heat or high temperatures usually above 80 degrees fahrenheit or 27 degrees celsius and decaying plant matter which is inevitable in the grow room so you really got to dial in your environment and keep it in check now that said large and dense flowers are susceptible as plants that are densely foliated just are more susceptible the more biomass your plant has the more moisture it's releasing back into the air so even if your grow room has good dehumidification the air being released by your plants can still get trapped among the leaves and the flowers and those plants that are too dense causes the air to stagnate and they just hang around a bit longer before being extracted so think of it this way you got a carbon filter up here which is circulating and circulating some of that air down here you got a bunch of dense thick colders in the canopy in there they'll have my micro pockets of stagnant air and that is what we're looking out for once those pockets of stagnant air are coupled with high humidity and a little bit of warmth then mold is ready to set up shop and that's not good now it's super important to be able to identify common molds of your flowers unlike mold that can develop on roots and it's not seen until it's too late mold on your flowers is actually usually easy to spot it may be any of several different colors depending on the type of mold present molds can be white yellow brown gray black blue green 
and even pink. I know it's a lot, but it usually appears pretty fuzzy and moldy Bruh. and spore-like. The most common types of mold that can form and develop on your flowers are botrytis or bud rot, powdery mildew, aspergillus, penicillin, and rhizopus. I probably butchered those words, but you know exactly what I'm talking about if you see that mold. It's nothing good. Botrytis bud rot is actually the most common of those molds that will affect your flowers. A lot of people just refer to botrytis as bud rot, and sometimes it's also referred to as gray mold. Now, botrytis can affect more than just the flowers. It also affects the leaves, the stems, and the roots too. Once it sets in, it moves quickly so you got to be careful and be vigilant on buds it will appear generally in the middle or on the sides but it can start in the middle of the bud and work its way out so you, sometimes you may not notice till after during harvest when you're breaking it apart and you see it in there and you're like damn now trust me it's happened to me already it can also present itself as a white gray or even have a bluish tint these flowers should literally be cut out immediately destroy just get rid of them there's no salvaging them it doesn't even make sense to try to keep the parts that don't appear to have damage because they they can still have spores that will be dangerous to consume or they can just spread to your healthy plants and then you ruin your other plants. So as soon as you notice it, get rid of it, put a bag over that bitch, take it out of the grow room and get rid of that shit, burn it if you have to. Now there's also PM or powdery mildew, a lot of people just call it PM. It's a very common mold problem and can attack the leaves, the stems, and the flowers. It often starts in the older leaves first and is easily identified because it looks as though flour was pretty much sprinkled on the leaves or the flowers. I'm talking about the white baker's flour on your flowers. Flowers on your flowers. Flower on your flowers. Damn, you, know, you get what I'm trying to say. A lot of growers out in warm, humid climates probably face this quite often. Now all that said, it is important to identify the specific type of mold on your flowers, but it's not as important as getting those affected ones removed and out of the grow room. Any mold on your flowers will result in a loss and they should be considered dangerous to consume. If it happened to me, I'll place effort on trying to ensure that the mold will not be a problem for future crops as opposed to trying to mitigate and save that crop, if you get what I'm trying to say. Now you want to make sure to prevent that mold especially pre and post harvest the best way to prevent mold on the harvested flower is to make sure that there's no mold present at the time of harvest and in the weeks leading up to it several steps you need to take them because those steps will ensure a mold outbreak is not right around the corner the first step is temperature molds often appear when temperatures are too hot over 80 degrees Fahrenheit or 27 degrees Celsius, that's too hot. If it's too cool, mold can also appear. I'm talking below 68 degrees Fahrenheit or below 20 degrees Celsius. A good temperature range to maintain is between 70 degrees Fahrenheit to 75 degrees Fahrenheit or 21 degrees Celsius to 24 degrees Celsius. Man, switching between Celsius and degrees is crazy, but I know you guys like it, so I try to bring it out for you guys. Now, the humidity. Humidity in the growth space should be consistently between 50 and 60%. This is high enough to keep your flowers from drying out and low enough to prevent mold from developing. Airflow is also super important guys. Spores have a hard time landing and staying on the flowers when there's constant airflow in the room. Fans should be placed around your plants so there's air moving under the foliage or under the canopy and above the canopy or above the foliage. Ventilation working in tandem with fans like carbon filters and stuff is the best way to help against mold. Now pruning is also important. Air needs to be able to circulate around those plants. It's all well and good to have fans blowing but if there's a bunch of foliage and it can't actually blow anything then there is a microclimate going on in there. There's a pocket of stagnant air. So it may be necessary to do some selective pruning to achieve optimal air circulation. This could include removing some of those older leaves or whole branches. Just pay attention to the lower parts of the plant where the foliage tends to be pretty thick and where light may not actually be penetrating through, so just get rid of it. Now you want to keep the mold off your flowers once you've harvested them as well. Optimal temperature, humidity, and air circulation are all critical. All through the drying and curing and storage phases, the environment will need to be controlled to keep mold from appearing and ruining your hard work on harvest. Freshly harvested flowers have a high moisture content. Ideal drying conditions include keeping the temperature between 18 to 20 degrees Celsius or 64 to 68 degrees Fahrenheit and capping your humidity at about 50 to 60 percent. They must also be in a dark place with good air circulation. Air conditioners can help to create these conditions if your drying areas are too hot or too humid but even with AC fans should still be used in the drying area just to keep mold from settling in. Think of it this way an AC unit will get the room nice and cold but there's not a lot of circulation. Prime mold conditions. Bruh. Now I've done a whole video on drying and curing so 
definitely check it out. That breaks down exactly how you should dry and cure to get the best taste, best flavor, and not affect the final product. Perfect. Now, after drying the flowers, you want to properly cure them to avoid bud rot appearing. Make sure your flowers have been trimmed of all those fan leaves and unnecessary plant material, and then pop them inside of some sterile airtight jars or some grove bags for at least three weeks, a month, a couple months, longer the better for me. Don't fill those jars or containers to the brim. Don't do more than three quarters of their total capacity. As your flowers cool, they'll continue to release moisture and being sealed up creates a favorable environment for mold to develop. Remember, it's all about being aware of those microclimates. Now, there are some cultivars and strains out there that have resistance to mold and mildews, but there's no strain of flowers that's 100% resistant 100% of the time. But with these methods, you will definitely be able to avoid that mold and it's not something you want to run into because it can ruin your entire crop so smash the like button for that because we ain't running into no mold over here and i hope you guys don't especially with these tips you should so drop a comment down below and let me know if you've ever run into bud rot or mold or powder or mildew or any of that stuff i'm always interested to find out what you guys got to say and how you guys dealt with it and if you haven't then i hope you don't but anyway man i hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll see you on the next one peace fam